You do not sneak a woman, even if a man had. And see, that's another thing. So many, so many women have defiled themselves and have robbed themselves of their own sacredness and devalued themselves, given it up in the backseat of cars and in abandoned uh, apartment buildings and, and over here uh, sneaking little boys through their mama's bedroom window, through, you know, sneaking men through the back door when their parents not home. That is utter abominable dishonor. Because first of all, if a man even wants to lay you down, he better have his own house and bed to lay you in. There's an old saying our ancestors used to say, you ain't got a pot to piss in nor a window to throw it out of. Do you at least have that, brother? Before you dare to feel entitled enough to pull that thing out your pants. How dare you? Do you even have a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of? Do you have your own home? Do you have your own bed to even lay that woman down in? And even if you do, are you prepared to show the respect to go to her parents? If you want her so bad, if you want her so bad, if she is just that desirable to you, then you should respect her enough because she is that valuable and precious to you to respect her honor and to respect her family's honor to then state your intention to make her your wife. Why would you occupy a body that you wouldn't make your possession forever? If you want her that bad, is she not a treasure that you would want to keep forever? Hmm. What is a temporary pleasure? If you wanted her that bad, would you want to keep her forever? So it should be natural to go to her parents and to be prepared to care for her, feed her, clothe her, and shelter her to the same capacity and ideally better, to a better quality of life than her parents, to honor their sacrifice. Because we have to think about the conversation between a man and a woman's father. Let's really think about this. Let's think about it. Let's imagine it. A man goes to this woman's father having just slept with her. How dare you? Let's think about the father's perspective. I'm out here breaking my back. I'm out here literally killing myself every day to feed this child of my loins because she's mine. And you defile her for free? I put food in her mouth. And you just gonna put your flesh in her mouth? I put food in her mouth every single day of her life. I risk my life to feed her every single day of her life. And all you got to offer her is some flesh to put in her mouth. and send her crawling back home, tiptoeing in shame, with her pH balance off, smelling rotten, to still come and eat my food? Especially as black men, think about the black man as a father, what he goes through, the terrors, the traumas, the discrimination, the struggle going out here to work every single day, getting up every day. That reminds me of a Bronx tale. <laughs> the working man is the tough guy. Getting up every day, working a job you hate, working a job where they disrespect you, 
working a job where you ain't nothing but a number to them, getting up every day, consistently working to put food on the table for my family. That's the tough guy. That's the hero. So this, this father risks his life every day to feed this daughter. And you can't feed her every day. You can't clothe her every day. You can't shelter her from the rain and the snow. The disrespect, how dare you? You did not even deserve to pull it out your pants. And these are the conversations men need to be having with each other. <laughs>